Did you know that ear waxing is a thing? I didn't know that until this week, really. I have a fiancé that uh, decided that it was going to be a great idea, a bonding experience, if you will, if we uh, all, well, the two of us, all of us, the two of us go and get a, a couple of facial care things done. And I thought that was a lovely idea. I thought to myself, yes, let's do this. Let us be groomed together. And as weird as that sounds, it's a lovely, very impressive um, experience. We arrived at the uh, shop where they were all sat on. I don't know what they call it, but it was a lovely shop. and It was very clean and it was very neat. And uh, when we got started, this lady called me into this room and it looked like a doctor's office, so I was immediately nervous. And she puts me on the bed and she says, okay, you've been booked for a ear, nose and wax. And uh, I thought to myself, ear, nose and wax. She says, yes, we're going to wax your eyebrows, we're going to wax your ears, we're going to wax your nose. And this, again, like I said, we, I'd heard it that this was going to happen, I had thought about it a bit, I understood that they were going to shape the eyebrows, they were going to you know, just get rid of those things, those ha loose hairs that grow on your ear balls and all that nonsense. And then I had started thinking about this nose wax. And my initial thought was, okay, they're going to trim the noses in the hair using wax, which is weird and uh, kind of gross, so maybe that's not what they're going to do. Maybe they mean they're going to put the hot wax on the top, the bridge of the nose, and yank any offending hairs. And that made sense, because I've heard of a full facial wax, and this made sense to me. So I was okay, and when she said this, I said, no problem, let's get this done. And she began, and she was very good. Very, very good. This was my first time ever waxing anything, unless you count, you know, colored papers and wax crayons and the, and the grade one and stuff. And, uh, well, you know, she did a great job with the eyebrows. They're very nicely shaped. I could feel the tugging, and every now and then she'd get in there with some tweezers. and It was a great experience. I felt very, very manly, very, very groomed. She began on the ears, and she placed some wax on the ears, and she ripped, and I thought, oh my god, that hurt, And uh, but it's okay, I can handle this. And she stepped away, and she said, right, I'm going to just uh, put the wax in your nose now, so that it has time to dry while I'm working on this ear. And my brain went, hold on, just, just, and it was too late, and I'd already got this this earbud of wax up my nose. And this created a situation where my brain sort of started saying, where the hell are you? What is going on right now? And I realized it was too late because any anything that was going to happen now was already foretold by the prophecies because even if she yanked the still cooling wax out of my nostrils right now, I was doomed. So I just bravely whimpered and carried on. And after a while, this lady with this beautiful soft touch, who was really, really an angel at this, says to me, OK, I think the nose wax has... <laughs> nose wax, listen to that. I think the nose wax has dried enough. It is time. Are you ready for this? And every part of you is screaming, no, I am not ready for this don't do this, what are you doing, oh my, and she grabbed the end of the cotton bud in a two-handed grip, and I found that interesting in the moment where my mind was concentrating so firmly on that one existence of a cotton bud up my nose, I just couldn't stop thinking to myself, how do you get a two-handed grip on a cotton bud. It's actually physically not possible, but this lady had done it. And she yanked like she was starting a lawnmower. And you sort of expect in the back of your mind that if this has been a thing that's been done over years, maybe it's not too an unpleasant experience. And then you get sorely disabused of that notion. And it feels as if a thousand bees are trying to kill you through your nose and uh, that didn't take because apparently nose hairs are stubborn 
and it required that on this particular nostril, the left nostril, which is, I've always thought my left side was most accommodating, it required a second tug, and then it was done, and it was over, and you think to yourself, you know what, I survived that, and there's no blood, and I'm alive, and oh my god, I'm alive, and it's so beautiful, and the world is wonderful, and they've got another nostril to do. Oh god, they have another nostril to do. No, we we can't actually get out of this because you cannot leave the salon, I imagine, with one nostril waxed. I don't I don't think they give a discount. So now you have to go through that a second time. You are committed, whether or not you didn't like it, whether or not it was more painful than being beaten to death by cows. It is now impossible to get out of this. And so up goes the second cotton bud and while that slowly cools in your nasal cavity and I'll let you think on that one for a while. You they're busy pulling air out of your head ears. And that's great because I mean that's something people need. You don't want to have old man ears. You don't want to have ears that are full of tufts of hair and it's an unsightly thing. But this is your nose they're coming back to. And what are we going to do? And oh my god, she's finished with my ears and now she's going to do my nose. And once again this lovely lady who was so friendly turns into Satan and grabs a two-handed grip on the cotton bud and gets a plus 2.5 to strength and yanks. I want to say gently tugs, but she pulls it like it is all that stands between her and freedom from this small little cubicle. And if she can just get these airs out, then she will and she yanks and now this time because my right side has always been quite stubborn it required not one tug not two tugs but three tugs and each tug became more and more insane more and more desperate I've got to get this out of him he's going to need this soon anyway so uh, after the first tug on the right side I actually literally smiled. I thought to myself, well that wasn't so bad, it's over. And then she said to me, okay, you know what, I'm going to have to come around you and actually stand on the side of you that has a cotton bud of wax up your nose and then I'm going to have to pull from that side. So she still took f five seconds to walk around me while I was dealing with this idea that it wasn't over, even though I thought it was. And again, two more tugs after that. But what really struck me afterwards, and I think this is what I'm taking away from this experience, is that once she was done, the lady calmly walked back to her original position on the left-hand side of me, holding a cotton bod snot lolly, calmly threw it away, turned to me who at this point had tears streaming out of my eyes and I'm not exactly squeamish but tears streaming out of my eyeballs whether it was relief that it was over or <laughs> from the shocking pain she calmly says to me there there that wasn't so bad was it yes it was I'm crying over here not not happy tears. These are, I am in pain. No, anyway. So, uh, <laughs> yes. So there's that. And you've got to ask yourself at this point, you've got to sort of think now. Where did nose waxing begin? Because who was the insane maniac that decided his or her nose hairs were so out of whack that they needed to get beeswax or some sort of wax onto a stick and shove that stick up their nose. And did they have someone to help them? Because 
surely they weren't going to remove the stick by themselves. So I assume they must have had somebody who would have come up to them and said, right, let me get that stick out of your nose, one, two, three. Hey, this is how we can make a lawnmower. This is great. We've not only invented a new grooming technique, but we have figured out how to make a starter for a motor. And the next thing you've got to ask is, having survived the first nostril pull, did our intrepid explorer into the world of facial grooming have the balls to go through it a second time? I don't think he did. I think if we go back in history and we find this worthy fellow, we would find that he had subsequently became known, or she, as one nostril Bob or one nostril Jill. Because no one in their right mind goes through that willingly twice.